Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at ISC 14 in Leipzig, Germany, and we're at the Cool IT Systems booth. And I'm here with Jeff Line. How are you doing today? Doing great, Rich. Thanks. Good, good. Well, well, thanks for hosting us. You know, I wanted to get the latest on what you guys were showing. So, so why don't we start the tour with with, with kind of an intro? Who is Cool IT Systems? Cool IT Systems is a specialist in delivering liquid cooling solutions for desktop computers, servers, and now specializing in, in larger data center implementations. Okay, okay. And, and what are you showing off here in the booth today? Uh, we've got a variety of solutions depending on the applications that the customers are interested in. Um, probably one of the, the you know, new things we'll get to in a minute was okay. kind of a, a larger scale, but to start with what we had, it was uh, quite similar to what we had last year. Um, we have a, a AHX 35, so what we've done is adopted a naming convention which utilizes a number, which is the number of kilowatts that it can typically uh, have as a capacity. Okay, so 35 kilowatts for, for this. this yeah, and, yeah, and this is a self-contained solution, so yeah. the nice thing about it is that you don't need to have uh, liquid plumbed into the data center from the facility side. So it's nice to be able to have that uh, high capacity performance, high density capability, but in, in terms of efficiency, it's not going to add a, a tremendous amount of efficiency because it's still actually taking all of the heat from the rack through a, a, a liquid to air heat exchanger, basically a giant radiator in there, yeah. and it has a fan construct which, which pulls the cool air in from the cold side and deposits all of the heat into the hot side. Um, so, but then it's still up to the air conditioning of the data center to dissipate that heat. Okay. Now, the, the nice thing inside there is we've got dual redundant pumps so that if, if it's got failover capabilities, of course, and gives people comfort that there's a, a low risk involved, but our modular structure allows us to have that hook up to our standard manifolds and our standard server modules, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So what would the advantage of this be versus just, you know, blowing air through through a rack, right? Is it is it getting to that number? Or? Well, it's it's the ability to actually utilize liquid cooling's advantage inside the server. Oh, um, okay. So most often if you had a, a very high-powered server, you know, say it was um, a 1.2 kilowatts or even higher with today's accelerator cards being 300 watts plus, and you've got 150-watt CPUs, people have, have created very dense form factors in... in to the point of, I think now we've got 1.5 to 2 kilowatts even in a one new server. Um, so the ability to dissipate that much heat with air is extremely difficult. Um, but if you liquid cool it, um, then you've got the ability to have an extremely dense form factor for the entire rack and having that go into the, the manifolded system, this is one of the options for dissipating the heat. Another one, which is what we have sitting right in front of us here, is a liquid-to-liquid -liquid heat dissipation module. Okay. This is what we call our CHX40. Um, the, the 40 would uh, indicate that we've got an ability to, to easily dissipate 40 kilowatts, actually potentially even more if you have cooler liquid. We can accommodate facility liquid temperatures that would be you know, in the W2 to W5 class. Now what that means is right from chilled water, you know, cold chilled water supply, right up to quite warm or even hot water cooling. Um, so if you had uh, liquid coming in at even 40 or 45 degrees Celsius, we've got an ability to dissipate uh, a, a very dense uh, heat load for the rack. Similar to the AHX, we've got dual redundant pumps um, that are built in. We have a proportional valve here, which will govern the amount of water that goes through the, the heat exchanger from the facility, so that if it's really cold water coming in, then we're not going to develop condensation going oh, in yes. with the coolant into the various different servers. Okay. We don't want to have any drips, right, uh, right, obviously. Right. Um, in the control system here, it's actually nice to, to see. We've got um, different zones for leak detection. Um, this is actually a sealed box so that if there is any drips or, or lack of liquid integrity, it'll actually be caught and then reported through the control system here. Um, you know, level sensing, you know, all the various different temperature and pressure uh, yeah. data is, is kept and monitored online as well. Okay. Um, so the, the big news for us this year is, is a much larger scale capability. Um, so previously we were developing, you know, rack solutions. Now what we've done is actually scale that up to what we have here. Okay. So this is our, our 
Rack DCLC CHX650. So this has the capability of dissipating 650 kilowatts. <laughs> okay, that is a lot of electricity, okay? A lot of heat. The, the, the heat is, is, it's the same sort of equation of what we had before. Uh -huh. You know, we, we saw the pumps that were in the top yeah. uh, over there. Yeah. If we have a look in here, they're significantly larger. Um, yes. Uh, obviously, you see there we've got dual redundant pumping capabilities. These, each pump does uh, between 360 to 380 liters per minute. Um, and there's a, a fairly sophisticated control system built in such that every week um, you use, you know, one pump, it'll then switch over to the other so that their service life is the same. And okay. then you're guaranteed that you're not going to have the backup pump be dried out or potentially not working and that be a surprise when you need it the most. Okay, so a centralized cooling system for what, like a dozen racks or how many? Well, it just depends on the load actually, yeah. but okay. you know, with 650 kilowatts, even if it was a very dense rack, you've got, you know, that could be 10, 60 kilowatt racks, you know, it sure. could be, it could be 20, 30 kilowatt racks, okay. you know, it really just comes down to managing the flow and what our engineers do is we scope each project individually and make sure that we've got appropriate capacity for the implementation. Okay. And as you can tell, when we're going to, to much larger scale installations, yeah. this is a, an ability for us to actually, you know, put, put one module in for many racks. And then if we're doing larger scale, like say it's, it's you know, not just 10 racks or 20 racks, but 200, 400, 1,000 racks, then we've got an ability to scale to that without a lot of difficulty. Yeah. Now, the, the, the nice thing about this solution, it's, it's, it's tried and true, right? It's the same sort of implementation that's been done by IBM since, you know, um, actually in the, in the 60s they sure. started doing it. Yep. Now, the, the philosophy here is what's actually inside is a liquid-to-liquid -liquid heat exchanger, just like we had in the rack version, mm -hmm. but there's some reluctance in, in these larger installations to having that high pressure facility water going right to the rack, right? So what we've got is an ability to abstract the heat exchanging. This can actually be even in a separate room from the rest of the, the racks and the equipment. And then the, the lower pressure uh, coolant, we actually can see on the, on the tubing that we have up here, we've got our, our coolant supply coming down uh, towards the racks. This is a much lower pressure, um, you know, yeah. typically at a, a about a one bar uh, level, and those are actually then feeding all the manifolds at the back Right, of the racks. so you don't have that fire hose kind of pressure levels coming uh, through that portion. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, now it sounds like an awful lot of flow <laughs> still yeah. with, with, you know, 350 liters a minute, yeah. but it is governed by pressure. Um, yes. So that, it, you know, it, it as you, you look at these types of systems, it's highly parallel. So, yeah. you know, each of these main feeds is supplying, you know, 42 here, 42 here, 42 here. Right. It, it starts to end up being, you know, a, a, a very um, highly parallelized system and we end up with very low pressure drop. Got it. Um, so Got it's it. uh, a, a very comfortable and um, we believe very reliable system. Yeah. You know, Jeff, your guys are telling me about this thermal uh, piping you use. It's kind of tried and true, especially here in... Europe, they use it actually for the drinking water there. Uh, well, for yeah, well, that for, for just about everything. In yeah. fact, actually, yeah. they've been using it here for, for decades. Um, and it's actually quite unique and, and something that we we discovered is uh, now being promoted um, in, in various, various uh, different applications, whether it be hotels, commercial, or industrial applications. Mm -hmm. The um, It's a polypropylene um, piping uh, developed by a company called Aquatherm. Okay. And um, we, we love it because it's actually, it's, it's flexible, it's fast to integrate, um, it's easy to create manifolding with it, and it has a, um, a, a unique joining system. They don't use glue, it actually is a, a plastic weld where the things are, are, are melted with an iron and then joined together. It's actually really cool. Oh, okay, so yeah, they thermally cu coupling, uh, so no chance for leaks or you can pressure test very quickly, not wait around. That's yeah. right. Okay. It, it, it's fast. Now, yeah. it's not something that we insist on. It's an option that we sure. provide to our customers. You know, there are some that are more comfortable with traditional copper brazed um, assemblies and, yeah. Yeah. and that's fine too. Okay. Um, so one okay. thing that you'll find with Cool IT Systems is that we're actually about delivering what the customer wants. Um, bringing the right technology um, for, for their application and, and doing our best to be flexible uh, and partner together with companies that, that potentially have other complementary technology. Um, so it's a, 
uh, I, I believe, a, a best of breed philosophy here, and, okay. and we use uh, partners um, for you know our, our, our couplings. We've worked together with a company called uh, Eaton Williams. It's a CES, CES group company. Okay. Um, to to bring some of our other technology applications in yeah. place, they yeah. have everything from you know uh, adiabatic cooling, air handlers. So we we feel like we're now becoming a solutions based provider. Um, we can actually come into the um, into the, the the customer site evaluate all of their requirements and needs, and then bring in the appropriate people and experts uh, to deliver the entire solution. Sure, sure, and you're ready for scale uh, with this kind of setup. Yeah, yeah. we're pretty excited about yeah. this, and, and yeah. something that uh, you know is, is, is pretty meaningful, and there's a lot of these companies around the floor <laughs> that are, I mean, liquid cooling is here, uh, yeah. and it's here to stay, and yeah. we're excited yes. about being a part of that movement. Yeah. There's a lot of really good technology that we see being implemented here on the floor. Okay. Um, you know, guys like Acetech, there's sure. uh, you know Eurotech right beside us here. Yeah. HP did their announcement here yeah. at the show. Yeah. Yeah. Bull. Um, so it's it's clear that you know liquid cooling is is definitely the way forward. Um, so we, we feel well positioned in that regard. Great, great. Well, it's great to see this from the outside. Can we see inside the server and what's going on there down at the sure, micro we'll have a look over here? Okay. So this is a, uh, a super micro platform here that uh, is um, one of uh, Boston's product offerings. They uh, have the, the liquid modules already integrated. So, you know, to, to kind of back it up a level, what we look at is, is um, we've got the, the server module, which is, you know, the cold plates mounted to the, the heat sources, whether they be CPUs or accelerator cards, GPUs, um, even in some custom uh, stuff we've done, memory, um, VRs, you name it. Um, so it really just comes down to the value proposition to the customer. Okay. And then you see the tubes exit out the back of the um, uh, server yes. and then plug into the manifold. So you have your supply of cold coolant and then your return of the hot. And the, the nice thing that we've done in, in terms of integrating these solutions is uh, we've developed a, a very low profile uh, cold plate module. So it's only 15 millimeters tall. Okay. It gives us an ability to integrate liquid cooling into even the most dense form factors, whether it be uh, blades or some of the more innovative stuff that we're seeing in terms of horizontal or open compute. Yeah. Um, yeah. We haven't yet found something that we can't fit our, our liquid cooling modules into with uh, relative ease. Okay, so how'd you do that? Did you take the pump out of this, this device and, and squeeze it down to a passive? Kind yeah, of system. Well, in, in actual fact, what we initially did with these is we removed the pump. Yeah. Um, so they're it's the same form factor, looks the same on the outside, but yeah. now we actually don't have the pump on the inside on on those that are installed. Okay. But now this is actually removing it completely, and utilizing the the patented split flow technology that we've developed yep. to have a very low pressure drop, a very high performance cold plate yep. um, capability, yeah. and then you know various different retention options, which gives us the ability to go on to. Um, Intel sockets, AMD, um, Phi, NVIDIA, right. you name it. Right. Well, Jeff, this is all fine and everything if, uh, if somebody's building a new data center, but what about retrofitting? I mean, there are a lot of uh, servers out there that are experiencing trouble with, you know, heat and power and cooling. Well, we found actually it's actually uh, quite a unique and, and common scenario where people have a dedicated uh, data center or, or cluster that they've got put in place relatively small room, maybe they're limited in air conditioning. We've got installations now taking place in, um, you know, several universities, Leeds, Binghamton, um, you know, uh, UNLV, um, where they were limited in terms of the, the, the air conditioning that they could bring in, but they wanted to increase their compute. Um, so we've retrofitted things like, uh, you know, Dell servers, uh, HP servers, uh, super micro platforms, um, it, it's all relatively easy for us at that stage. We just take off the stock heat sinks, replace them with our modules, um, and then have, as long as we've got an ability to get the tubes in and out, mm -hmm. um, then we can liquid cool just about anything. Oh, that's very exciting. So it, it sounds like the future is very bright for liquid cooling, and, and you guys seem to be at kind of the, uh, the apex of, of, of what's new and exciting. So congratulations. Thanks a lot, Amy. We're, we're on a, a bit of a tear. We feel really good about it. We are on our, our third consecutive quarter of record revenue. Um, you know, people are excited about our technology and we're, we're happy to work with them.